All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today we're gonna to talk about the apricot. We haven't really talked a ton about this particular fruit. It's really one of my favorite fruits. Um, I had an apricot last year off of one of my trees that absolutely blew me away. And I've been so excited ever since eating a few apricots last year to then try more of them and have more of them this year. It's always a, you know, a toss up if I'm even gonna get fruits off of my apricots because they usually bloom so early in the season that we inevitably could get a, a late frost that comes in and kills off all the flowers or kills off all the fruit. And then I end up losing a lot of my crop. And here in the Philadelphia area, that's probably pretty likely to happen, I would say, maybe two out of five years or maybe even more than that. So I'm always very fortunate when I even just see apricots on the tree. They've survived, um, you know, and we're past that point of frost. I'm always super excited. Plus the fact that I have a variety or I used to have a variety on the other side of this planting, the sunnier side of this planting. This, by the way, is uh, on the back side here. This is the east side of the planting where I have a tomcot apricot. I have an early blush that I grafted myself down here. And then I also have, going forward more towards west, I have you know, things like uh, pluots. This is a gauge plum. I also have in the front a um, Italian prune plum. And I also have some Japanese plums. So in total, I have like about eight-ish trees just in this little small area. And they kind of form one big tree. Um, wouldn't really recommend doing it like this, by the way. But I used to have an early blush in the front on the west side. And that's where I had my apricots last year from that really just were mind-blowingly good. So what I decided to do, because it was so tasty, I actually grafted onto this rootstock. It actually had a plum on it, and I got rid of the plum. I said, no, 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 no. This fruit's so good that I'm going to graft uh, this apricot onto it. And that's what I did. And it grew and actually it, it flowered this year just in time, even though it's so small and young, it flowered just enough to give some cross-pollination to my tomcot apricot. And that's what we're looking at here is the fruits today is from that tree. I've already harvested roughly, I don't know, four to five fruits off of this tree already. Um, today is the 28th of June, so sometime in the last week of June, I think you could expect apricots. I think even on the other varieties I've had, the other variety I, I harvested from, I think that was roughly the right time. So right now I have about seven fruits in my hand. They're quite small, some of them, uh, but they're not that much smaller than I think an apricot I've been buying at the stores. You know, I really love this fruit and this is probably the stone fruit out of them all other than maybe cherries that i buy actually quite often at the store uh, at the grocery store when i don't have a total surplus of fruit um, i also just eat a lot of fruit so for me you know buying fruit isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world especially because the apricot i find and the cherries they are pretty comparable to what you're able to grow at home which I found to be really surprising this year with my apricot, especially on this tomcot. Now, the early blush is so darn good that it's not comparable at all to what you get at the store. In fact, I don't even think, I'm wondering if that's even, you know, there's something, there's something special about it. Because the, the, the fruits I've had off of this tomcot just have not been that impressive. As I said, if they're comparable to what you get at the store, you know, is it even worth growing at that point in a sense? Like the cherries I had for the last few years, you know, they're sweeter. Um, I wouldn't even say, by the way, they have a more intense cherry flavor. So in a sense, the grocery store cherries are beating mine, but they're definitely sweeter, they're fresher. There's something about them that's just clearly better. Um, not so much so that I would argue you have to grow cherries. And I would say the same thing about this tomcot. Uh, you know, tomcot is just that variety that a lot of you know hobbyist growers. And I don't know how well 
this one's being grown commercially or if it's being grown commercially. But a lot of people in the area, in the mid-Atlantic, especially in these humid places, really seem to like this one. It's getting a good reputation. So it performs well. And I don't really have any problems with it other than maybe a late frost. These fruits are completely grown organically. I have done no spraying. All I do is try to attend to the, the health of the soil and uh, you know, plant different flowering plants to help encourage the right insects and discourage the wrong insects. And you know, with the help of a good bug ecosystem, I think you can really grow these fruits mostly organically, especially at home. There are some different blemishes and things on here that you might argue, well, that's probably not a good idea. I know, however, by the way, comparing the flavor of this Tomcot to the store-bought apricots, that they're perfectly ripe because they're falling off the tree. I mean, you can't get any more ripe. They, if I were to pick some of them, they come right off with absolutely no give whatsoever. And actually out of the seven I have here in my hand, I would say probably five of them have fallen off the tree. So there really is no excuse as to why these are so comparable to the store that I can think of. I mean, it is in a shadier location here. You know, on the other side is a bit more sunny where my early blush tree used to be. You know, now it's down here. But I actually think the variety has a lot to do with it. And I'll tell you why. So this is my theory. And we won't know, maybe you guys can help me out. Someone can comment down below it has a, you know, been eating apricots for years now at home or is growing different varieties. But when you harvest something like a peach and you're growing peaches, you know, you can let them soften on the tree. Um, these apricots, or this, this particular variety, Tomcot, doesn't really soften on the tree. It, it falls from the tree hard. Well, not totally hard, but hard enough to the point where you're thinking to yourself, this isn't a peach, right? Uh, if I wanted to pick my fruits early, like a peach, I could pick them off and let them soften up on my counter. And that's kind of like, you know, buying a peach at the store. Whereas these apricots, it's, they kind of do the same thing, right? They turn the right color, uh, grown commercially, they pick them and then they ship them across the country or whatever it is and put them in the grocery stores. So that's kind of why I would argue that these apricots I have in my hand are really not all that different than what you get at the stores because in their basically perfectly ripe state or most ripe state, I'm not really seeing any differences. I'm, I'm really just stumped. Um, whereas, this is the most interesting point that I think of the whole video, or at least for me, is that the early blush apricot that I harvested last year, it softens up on the tree like a peach. Um, when I picked that thing, it was so soft and juicy like a peach that it really was mind-blowingly good. It tastes like cotton candy. The sugar content was insane. The flavor explosion in my mouth was insane. Uh, and it quickly became one of my favorite fruits and the fruit, one of the fruits I look forward to the most. These, uh, I don't know. So there's my little, you know, breakdown here of what I'm trying to get at is if you're really, I got some mosquitoes actually getting me here, but if you guys are, you know, really interested in growing apricots, I would certainly try that early blush variety. Um, I'm gonna certainly, when I move to a different property and I'm planting different trees, I'm gonna probably graft my own trees. Um, unless I don't have the particular variety or can't find scion of it. Um, and I'm gonna look into other varieties because so far I, I like the Tomcot for many reasons. I got them. Hopefully that's the only one. Um, but you know, I, I like Tomcot for many reasons, but you know, that early blush is just so mind blowingly good that I got to think that either there's something different about that tree in terms of its genetics, it's just a different variety, or maybe there's just something, some circumstances that I have not been doing or that's been out of my control that's making the Tomcot just not as good of a piece of fruit. So let me know down in the comments. I'm gonna try this now. This one is the biggest. Also has had pretty good light. Um, it's got good color to it. 
you know, some of them actually were really dark orange. It is a beautiful piece of fruit. I would say the only little bump right is right there. It is quite soft. The top is a little firm and the, uh, the base is definitely a bit soft. Um, also the stem is missing and because the stem is missing, the inside is sort of exposed. So when they fall off the tree, you gotta get them. Immediately very juicy and it's a free stone. So the pit comes right away, right off that flesh. I'll just take this out and you can see right in there is all that good juice, all that good nectar. This is what it's all about. Um, let's try this. Hopefully I'm impressed and maybe this entire talk, this first 10 minutes was for nothing and I changed my mind. All right, that's a lot better than a store-bought apricot. Mm. That's real good. So maybe I just need to let them soften longer because um, this one's definitely so sweet. And down here at the bottom, it's really softened up. That's real good. It's just not though, still as good as this is. And I would say, yes, better than a store-bought apricot as we've just discussed. Maybe we could take it all that away. However, it's nowhere near as good still as the experience I had with that early blush apricot because it softens up on the tree. I had to gather these up from the ground bring them inside um, or pick them as they're just coming off the tree very easily and then let them soften up inside. Um, if they could soften up on this tree, I think maybe I'd have a similar experience. But even the flavor of this is just not the same. There is no cotton candy in here. There is no explosion of amazing, intense apricot flavor. This is, it's got some apricot in there. It's sweet sugary sweet. Quite soft like a peach. Should be. It is a good piece of fruit. I'm not going to lie. It's great. Um, but that early blush apricot, man, I'm telling you, you go back. You guys, <laughs> you guys aren't convinced. Grow it yourself. I got mine from Adams County Nursery and there's a video we did. I'll try to put it in the comments. I'll pin it to the top or put it in the description. But there is that apricot from last year we did a video on that's just mind-blowingly good. So I will see you guys soon. Thank you for watching this one. And uh, we'll see you for the next one. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought, all right? Take care.